Wait, but you shaved it off or you shaved everything but the mustache and now you got the mustache? Oh my gosh! Slumburger. Uh, what you got? It's probably something else that's weak to, um, Magnus on the back, if I were to guess. Uh, switch advantage is fairly important still. What can be in the back that could take out the Empoleon? I don't think too much that the Quagsire can't take out. It could be a, it could be a Magnus zone, but I'm better anyway with a shield, so it should be okay. Okay, Magnus zone. Oh, it is. <laughs> Makes sense. I know she's a big Paulasha fan, so she's gotta be a big Magnus zone fan. She said, should I go for sky attack over shadow ball? I said, I don't know, but I'll let my YouTube comments tell you. <laughs> it's 0. 0.560 DPE for sky attack. 0. 0.56. Oh, wait, no, it's the same. Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we'll be talking about my Remix Greatly team. And personally, I've been struggling a lot in GBL because I cracked my screen and I couldn't see the typing on my screen for a hot minute. But I got a new phone and we're ready to climb. This team has been a ton of fun. It has a ton of neutral play. You will likely not lose their card bank if you run this team. The team is a Shadow Quagsire with a Shadow Empoleon and a Toxpex in the back. ABA weak to Polyrath, Frothorn, Jelson, all kind of core breakers, but there's play against all of them, and I'm going to show you how. If you don't have the Shadow Quagsire or the Empoleon, you definitely run the non-Shadow. However, I prefer the Shadow, just damage is a lot better in general, um, and you'll see in some of these clips, but of course, use what you got. Before we get into the battles, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons who've been supporting my content creation. If you'd like private one-on-one -on -one coaching, scrims against me, some of my lead guides and strategies ahead of time, or even tune into my live stream battles, feel free to sign up through the Patreon link down below. To kick things off, we have a Mantine in the lead. And like I said, this team has a lot of neutral play in a lot of situations. So I feel that uh, it's just really flexible in a lot of situations. This is not necessarily the best match of a Quagsire because they're doing resistant much shot damage. But Sonash does quite a bit and there's two great checks to the Mantine in the back. So I like to just throw the Stone Edge and then just see what happens. Like I said, Frothorn, a Core Breaker. This one's actually running Thunder, which is kind of nuts. Um, but... Uh, you know, shield advantage, uh, it's going to be pretty nice. And again, the Shadow Empoleon just hits way harder, especially if you have shields up. Like, even the Steel Wing damage is starting to chunk away for resisted. And it just makes this matchup um, a little bit better if you have shields. Now, obviously, shields down, maybe not as good. Um, maybe not the best timing on my end, but I think I was just going for the move before they get to one. And yeah, we flip switch uh, with that shield advantage we got early on from the Quagsire. And I think this charge attack priority as well, so even better. Um, but this puts me in a pretty good spot. There's not a lot of things that core break the Quagsire and the Tox Specs. So if you have switch advantage for both, um, it's usually pretty good. And here comes their own Quagsire. So uh, we're going to throw the Aqua Tail right away. Um, so yeah, Quagsire pretty good here, but I have energy on my Tox Specs and uh, should be in a pretty good spot. Jelson, uh, like I said, is not the easiest. I can't remember if I saw any in these two sets. But usually speaking, you want either your Quagsire on it or Empoleon. It's not a bad backup option. Um, the baits from Surf can be annoying on the Quag uh, Empoleon, but not too bad. I'm going to be able to win that matchup. Uh, a lot of neutral play into this uh, Alone Nine Tails as well. But I'm going to swap over. I usually like to throw one Mud Shot and see what they do. Because I've seen people just swap in Polyrath into my Quagsire right off the bat. So if I just say swap myself uh, right away to Empoleon, I just put myself in a bad spot. Um, so I'd like to just see if they decide swap out or not. They didn't. Also, you can see if they're running Powder Snow or Charm. But either way, for the back end matchup, it doesn't really change much. And it doesn't change too much in the front end matchup too. They just have a little less fast attack pressure, but a lot more charge attack pressure. Um, but yeah, 
Ninetales pretty much never comes back into this matchup, so I just spam the swap out button in most situations. I think I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Now it looks like I'm gonna spam it. And here comes their Swampert. But we have a shield advantage, which is gonna be pretty nice. Um, and of course, nothing they throw can really be that threatening. Uh, you really just want to save your shields for the Hydro Cannon. Unfortunate charge attack timing, um, charge attack priority, I guess. Uh, I didn't really realize that I was gonna lose that, so learned something new here today. Um, it might be more IV dependent than I think, but uh, it is what it is. However, we have the shield, the final shield for the Swamper, which is what we really want it for. And uh, the main thing is, I think if they, yeah, if this lands, I think one brine should be enough. So I think, oh, I go for the catch actually. And then uh, they just, yeah, that was actually probably a better play. Go for the catch, save the shield. So I could just dump talk to later, but looks like my opponent just decided to quit out before we could make that play. Another alone nine tails, but this time it's going to be charm. And... This matchup is pretty solid overall. Um, coming into this, uh, it's a little bit tricky for the Gligar because they're behind our energy and I should be able to outpace. So I'm just double shield, even though it's probably just aerial ace, but honestly aerial ace plus a wing attack damage might be quite a bit. So I'm just going to shield up both and then go for this Hydro Cannon, which I will get there before them. So even if they double bait you, not a big problem. And then we flip switch. This A9 has very few places to go. They actually have a car bank in the back. So even worse, and looks like my Napoleon might be able to take out their whole entire team. Um, yeah, not quite, but pretty close to it, and they're going to quit out right there. So um, again, that Shadow uh, uh, Empoleon just puts on so much pressure. Um, obviously, a more neutral matchup here, but uh, it's up to you on how you want to play this. I usually go Stone Edge first because a lot of people don't shield, and then now they're going to have to start shielding Aqua Tail, which is going to be really nice. I do this similarly to Obscoon as well. I don't think there's an Obscoon match in this series of clips, but something I do for Obscoon too. Um, more experienced players may shield that first potential Stone Edge because they recognize it. So, depending on what ELO you're at, maybe just adjust your playstyle um, how you see fit. Um, but here we go. We get another Aqua Tail as well through. And the pacing is just too fast on this for the Configuries to hang on to. All right. They have a double. Uh, kind of similar thought process. Go for the harder hitting Stone Edge. And then now the Aqua Tail might get shielded. We'll see if they shield it or not. Um, okay. And then they come in A9. <laughs> it's not going to be a good time for them. I'm going to quit out. Uh, a lot of low Nine Tails. And this whole team is also fairly strong into that as well. Um, but here we have a Deoxys Defense. Psycho Boost is usually worth shielding. It does a lot of damage. You can tank the second one. First one you can tank as well. But again, similar philosophy as the Stone Ash Aqua Tail. Why shield the second one when it does less damage? We can shield the first one. Um, this opponent is going to swap into a double. And, you know, even if they have Wild Charge, not the Ender World. Uh, puts them uh, close to within like Brine slash Aqua Tail territory. So they might shield this. Yeah, they do. That's okay, though. Um, they're charging up to like almost double at this point, which is not really worth me shielding. I'm just going to get hit by two. Um, so we let the Tox Specs go, but the Deoxys events is kind of low. Unfortunate uh, situation there where I got denied. Um, and they get a body slam through, but they come in obstacle. This is pretty bad. So almost like triple fighting fast attacks. Almost like triple counter, except double has double kick pretty tough for this team uh because the employee has nowhere to go so you can see right here um i think my only win con is if they throw a night slash instead of cross shot but they went straight for the cross shot so uh this one's pretty much over we lose that one game but four and one throughout the rest of the set pretty good uh i have one more set to show you it's the one following this um but yeah shadow gyarados Kind of a tough lead, uh, way harder than man team, those same typing, just because the dragon breath damage is a lot more oppressive. And they come in uh, Magnus Zone, which is not ideal for me. Um, mostly because the Watcher still hurts the Quagsire quite a bit, so I still go into Shield 1, I think, just to preserve some health. Um, and I'm going to let the second one go. We'll see how much damage it does from the second one. Um, arguably, I could have double shielded as well. Because that's probably going to do more than most of what Gyarados is going to throw at me. But I go for the Stone Edge. I have the energy. And they're down all their shields. Uh, could have potentially baited there too. But kind of wanted the guaranteed shield. Let's see what they do. And they try to catch. They don't catch. But this is pretty bad for me. The Grisby is going to resist this Poison Jab damage. And the Brian's just very underwhelming. Also, Brian takes way too long to get to. So kind of a tough matchup for me overall. Um, the opponent played it really well too. 
just kind of capitalizing on their advantages but yeah scorching sands just comes out way too quick as you can see here i had an energy lead coming into this and still just uh not able to get to my moves fast enough i also get debuffed so not really ideal uh, i went for a slight uncharged so i could potentially farm it down but the character already had energy so it's pretty much over at this point and yeah nothing i could do there well played though um definitely a tough matchup for sure we got gudra um you know, kind of have neutral play with the Quagsire, but slightly better matchups in the back end. So I'd rather do that and try to draw any Polyrath. The whole point of this is to draw any potential Polyrath uh, or Magnezone, really, right? Electric types, just so that the Toxic Specs are more free in the back. If it's Polyrath, I, if they come in Polyrath, I always come in with the Toxic Specs instead, even though you're showing your third. But um, typically speaking, they're going to be kind of weak to the Toxic Specs after that. Uh, okay, so they have Typhlosion. And uh, we're going to do a lot of damage for sure. But we have Aqua Tail. We have Triple Water. And I'm going to catch, actually. Uh, looks like I'm going to catch a Blast Burn, too, which is quite nice. Um, Thunder Punch is going to do a decent amount of damage here. I think it's just worth shielding at this point because it could do more. It's a Thunder Punch from this is going to do more damage than a Thunder Punch from Gudra, right? So um, that's probably the best way to think of it. Um, and they come in with Gudra. Ooh, it's getting tricky. I'm pretty low on health. Let's see what we can do. They actually do Aqua Tail. Maybe they didn't think they could get to the Thunder Punch. I don't know. But they're pretty much locked in at this point in time. So I'm trying to see what they have in the back. Ends up being a Mantine. Uh, I was going to try to catch a potential move here, but unable to. Um, I do have some energy left over, though. Oh, that's actually quite a bit of damage. That did way more than I thought. Um... But yeah, they the Aerial Ace. They have back-to-back -back Aerial Ace, but they have energy now. So, and we have a little bit of energy left here. I'm gonna throw the Brine because the Brine plus the Poison Jabs it takes to get to the Sludge Wave is more than enough. And yeah, able to finish it off right there. The Blast Burn Catch definitely helped me quite a bit in that matchup. Uh, Shadow Gligar. Um, pretty good matchup for the Quagsire. Even the non-Shadow, I believe, could pretty much two-shot with the Aqua Tail. Um, yeah, should definitely be able to. And you win charge deck priority, so even better. I'm just going to let this go, because at this point in time, it's kind of done my job. I should be able to survive a dig either way, so I'm going to let it go. Ends up being Aerial Ace. Um, I think I'm just going to try to catch Aerial Ace, but they end up um, swapping anyway before the catch. However, this is pretty good for me, too. Um, we draw the Typhlosion. I don't think this is even worth shielding. Oh, no, I do go for shield. Maybe I'm thinking right, I should be able to outpace. Yeah. Oh, not quite. I think it's probably... Yeah, it's not really worth shielding at this point, too. Um, I think we just farmed out. Probably not the best shield for me, because all that energy I got, extra energy, was not really worthwhile. And I was just doing resistance sealing. So, I have a misplay on my end, thinking that I could get there. But we get the Quagsire with some energy, and we have the Aqua Tail. I'm a little nervous now, because they came in Gligar into this to soak up the energy, and I'm thinking they're probably pretty good into the Toxic in the back. And... Yeah. That's the cape. So, this is going to be a tough one for sure. Resist the poison jab. Non shadow and pulling on top of it. So, not even taking as much damage. But even if it's a shadow, I think it's probably going to survive. Yeah. Um, I think it's close to back to back anyway. So, it's not really worth shielding. Uh, honestly, if there was shadow, no, I don't know. I might take more ceiling damage. So, I think either way, I probably lose that. But well played by the opponent right there. Um, Typhlosion's, you know. Generally speaking, not too bad, but it does have a lot of play into the team as well because it just all its moves hit quite hard, even for resisted. Um, and it's got super effective moves for two of them. So, Shadow Quagsire Mirror Match. Uh, overall, not too bad. You want to avoid both Empoleon and Toxpex on this, so seeing the lead is pretty good. Um, even if you lose Charge Tech priority, if you could put this within like Seal Wing territory, uh, it's going to be worthwhile. And you can see right there. I think I shield and farm down. Yeah. I mean, get value out of this. Quagsa has really quite great coverage into a lot of things outside of Polyrath. So uh, you're usually able to grab a shield back or do quite a bit of damage. So like I said, you get a shield back or do a lot of damage. They end up shielding up. And we're just going to swap out here uh, because we do the same thing. It was a Mantine in the lead. You okay, Grant? It's almost over. I don't have my cats in my videos as often these days. So I want to just feature her a little bit. But she acting like she's in prison. So... Let's put our hands up. <laughs> uh, okay, so we get this matchup, though. Overall, um, pretty good. They just stay in, uh, which is always a good sign. I mean, they don't have a lot of coverage for this, which likely means they don't have a lot of coverage for this um, talk specs in the back. But they actually do. Ooh. Well, that's not good. Um, 
I think uh, if I could get a shield off there, Clygar could be good, but I don't actually get um, to my Hydro Cannon earlier, so it puts me in a slightly tougher spot. I believe this opponent actually shields this, which probably was not the best shield because my Quagsire can still grab, get to a move. So I'm gonna just let this move go and then probably just come in Quagsire, yeah. Uh, yeah, I should be able to get to an Aqua Tail, no problem. I'm gonna charge check prior day as well. So the whole point of my tax specs there was to kind of just soak up a lot of that extra energy that Gligar farmed off my Empoleon. And then lets me get that Aqua Tail off. Oh, uh, another Mantine in the lead. Meta is fairly small, so it's pretty good. Um, what do you do if you face a Polygrath in the lead? Because uh, I'll explain that while we see this matchup play out like last time. In that situation, you just stay in and finish it off with Toxic Specs, and then hopefully your Empoleon can sweep. Usually, Empoleons can be pretty good in the back end uh, in those situations. Funny enough, I did not see a single Polygrath in lead in all my games. So maybe I just got super lucky, but Polygrath is usually always in the back and just counting down my Empoleon, which is still not a great situation to be in, but just want to give you all a heads up that in the lead, it's a little bit on the tougher side for sure to handle. Okay, uh, we throw on charge check priority. So able to take out this Quagsire, maintain switch advantage, which is kind of nice. I don't know if I can get to another move before this Mantine takes me out though. Oh yeah, we barely do, which is quite nice. Uh, this could potentially put in a poison jab territory uh, for my intox specs. So that's going to be really, really good for it. And they're going to throw the energy too, so even better. Anytime you could get them to throw energy at a tanky Pokemon like that, you're in a good spot. And this is a little bit dicier because one dig could take me out, whereas full health Quagsire is a different story. Um, do I shield this or not? I think I do because even Aerios puts me quite low. I need this Aqua Tail to land too for me to have a chance because... It's going to be way harder hitting than the Brine. And it gets another move. And I don't think I survived this. Yeah, they went straight for the dig. But that's okay. Uh, I just have to watch out for a potential catch. But they just throw the move right away. And I think it's an aerial ways. Yeah, it is. So that puts us in a really good spot. Talk specs super bulky. Let's see how much health this Manting has. Yeah, just not enough to get off. I think you need to get off at least two aerial ways. Maybe even a third. Yeah, it's going to be close. Oh, Let's see. Okay, they do get to the second one. And we barely survived, yeah. So, uh, finish off on another positive set. Um, and like I said, we didn't really see much carbink, but if you do face carbink with this team, generally speaking, you should win. Best of luck though, if you decide to run this team, really fun team in my opinion, a lot of neutral play in these situations. And yeah, I mean, triple water, it definitely works out. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and uh, subscribe. Be sure to hit that notification bell to get alerted when I post my new video, cause I'll probably be featuring some Necrozma evolution in Mass League. So definitely stay tuned for that. And happy GoFest weekend for everyone. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.